That is the Redline REPP70 pressure pot media blast cabinet that I operate here at home. And the reason we call these things a pressure pot cabinet is because down below, you see that red pot right there. That's where all of the media mixes with compressed air. This is not a siphon feed blaster. It's kind of like combining a siphon feed blaster and an air compressor. And then in that pot down below, we're mixing compressed air with media that then exits that pot under great force. That's why we call it a pressure pot cabinet. In order for these things to operate, they use several different electromagnetic valves and gaskets that allow everything to open and close so that the pressure pot works properly. The kicker to this is, is these components, these mechanical components, operate in a very aggressive environment in that you've got high pressure abrasive blast media that is flowing over mechanical things. So if you're going to operate one of these things and put some hours into it and use it a lot, you've got to expect that there are going to be times that you're going to be uh, diagnosing and repairing some of these valves and gaskets. The purpose of this video is to make that easier. So rather than try and show you all of these little valves and everything while they're on the cabinet, you can see up underneath here, we've got valves all over the place. We've also got more valves underneath it down there on the back side of the cabinet. Rather than try and show all of that to you while it's on the cabinet, we have taken all of the components that operate this machine and pulled them out of the cabinet, kind of doing like a deconstruction video. And so what we're gonna do is show you all the components and how they work, but not on the cabinet. So you can get an idea for how everything actually operates. At the end of this video, our goal is for you to know and understand how these things work so that when you have a component that is, needs to be replaced, you are able to diagnose it correctly and get that part ordered on our website in an efficient manner. So now we're gonna head on down to Redline where our two techs at Redline, Justin and Stefan, have pulled out all the components and set everything on a pallet. And we're gonna have a look at how it all works. Okay, so we've got our REPP70 here. This is our deconstructed REPP70. This is all the components that makes everything work. We've just taken the cabinet away so we can see all the components and what we've got. I wanna break this down into a couple of different sections. First, we're going to talk about the air supply. So what we have here first is a great big piece of PEX line. This is our incoming air supply. It comes into the cabinet, and the first thing it does is go into a T-fitting right here. So the air, the, the, the air supply goes into our air pressure regulator, but before it goes into that to be regulated, we send pressure. You can see coming out this little 90 right here, goes into a piece of PEX line, and it comes into an electromagnetic valve right here, and then it splits up. We're gonna have a blue and an orange line coming out of the electromagnetic valve. Okay, so we've got our air pressure regulator right here. Pressure is gonna come out of this air pressure regulator and go into an electromagnetic valve. We'll talk about that more here in a few, but assuming that valve is in the open position, air comes out of that valve and then goes into this PEX line. The PEX line comes around to the back side of the pressure pot and goes into a T. In the event that everything is open, it then pressurizes the tank right here, as well as sends more pressurized air down through this PEX line to the bottom of the pressure pot, where we have what this is. This is called an MV, or we call it a mixing valve. You ha also have a regular little uh, you know, valve like you operate with a water hose right here. And what happens is the media, the pressurized media, comes down through here, assuming you've got this opened. It mixes with just straight up incoming air right here. It all mixes right there and then comes out at this fitting here. This fitting is where the actual rubber hose attaches to that you're holding in your hand that does the blasting. So your media comes out of here pressurized, assuming everything is in the open position. Okay, earlier we talked about our electromagnetic valve with our two lines coming out the back side of the valve. We have a blue and an orange line coming out the back of that. And they come into what we call a PPV or pressure pot valve right here. And I want to show you how this thing operates if it's operating correctly. So first we have our orange line right here. If I were to disconnect that line and I were to step on the pedal, you should feel air come out of it. And of course you do. I'm not going to pull the blue line off right here, but the blue line is a full-time pressurized line. It should always be receiving air no matter what. 
So now I want to show you how to diagnose if your pressure pot valve is working correctly. Now you'll notice that we have this threaded hole right here so we can see down inside of the valve. Normally there's a rubber hose that threads into that that exits and exhausts uh, everything back inside the cabinet. We've got that hose removed right now so that you can see down inside the valve. And one of the first things I want to say is I don't recommend you looking down inside of there if you're not wearing face and eye protection. We don't want to see any pressurized media come back and hit you in the face and the eyes. This is your rubber valve that is inside right here. This is what actually does the moving. So as we step on the pedal, you're going to see that valve move forward and close. And then when we let off of it, it's going to come back into the open position. So we'll go ahead and step on that pedal now. Did you see that little valve inside there move? Let's do it one more time and get a real good look down inside there. And that's how it works. There's one other thing that I want to mention. If we have a look at this Y fitting right here, we have a pop-off valve right here that ensures that we don't build too much pressure inside the tank and, you know, have it rupture or anything like that, as well as a piece of PEX line that comes out of the tank. And this PEX line comes down to our control board. And then we have a gauge right here that reads the pressure inside of the tank. Completely disregard this black structure that you see here. This is just a spare part we had around the shop that we zip tied our tank up so that it would be held in place where you could see it. In the event that your gauge that reads pressure from the tank is not showing pressure inside the tank, you may want to consider two things. Either A, is that little valve right there worn out? Go ahead and pull that thing apart. If it's worn out, maybe you just need to replace that part right there. However, if you remove your exhaust hose that goes here and that valve is not moving, you may want to consider replacing the entire part. Next, I want to talk about the mushroom valve on the unit. If we have a look here at the top side of the pressure pot, you can actually see these parts. So this right here is your upper seal. I can reach down in there with my index finger and I can feel it right there on the inside of the pressure pot, as well as our mushroom valve. So these two come together. That mushroom valve comes into the up position and seals off right there. And that's what seals everything off on the top side of the cabinet. So as I step on this, you're going to see that this, this valve right here move into the up position. It's not going to stay in place for just a second, and we'll talk about why. So I step on the pedal, and you see right there it tries to come up. I'll go ahead and do it one more time. Okay, the reason that it's not coming up and staying up is because I don't have this door installed right here, so it's impossible to build pressure inside the cabinet. I left that off so you could see inside the cabinet, and I'll press it again. You can watch it jump up. One more time. And that's how the pressure pot uh, mushroom valve works. One of the most common problems that I want to share with you that our techs get here at Redline is, guys, buy this cabinet. It's not working right, and it turns out it's because they've got too much media in the cabinet. And let me explain to you what happens. So you don't want to fill your media up any higher than to this inlet exit right here, because if you do, as soon as you let off that pedal and it proceeds to depressurize and all of that pressure comes back through this valve and comes out through here, goes back inside the cabinet, it also fills this entire valve full of media, which is a great way to shorten the life of the cabinet. Not just that, we've also seen folks who have put way too much media in these cabinets to the point to where not only is the entire pressure pot completely full, but they can't even see the mushroom valve. They've put so much media in there that the mushroom valve cannot even move. So at the end of the day, you don't want any more media in it than up to just below that little inlet exit point right there. My recommendation to you is to add about half of a 50 pound bag of blast media to the cabinet. And then you're going to notice when you need to top it up and add a little bit more media as you go, because you're not going to be able to blast for very long before you run out of media. So as you top it up, add just a little bit at a time. Five pounds or so as you go is good. If you suspect that these two gaskets right here that form your mushroom valve are ready to be replaced, the first thing I'm going to tell you to do is to remove your grates that you're going to set your workpiece on and just look right down inside the cabinet. You're going to be able to see this. You can even stick your finger in there and feel it. If it feels like it's worn, it may be time to go ahead and replace these components. You can also, uh, with the grates removed in the cabinet, just operate the cabinet. And if you see pressurized sand, 
again, spewing up out of this hole right there, it's definitely time to replace your mushroom valve. So this valve right here that you see me turning, that valve adjusts how much media comes from our pressure pot down through here into our mixing valve and out our hose. I can't tell you where to set that valve at because it's going to be different from customer to customer. Some guys are running fine media, coarse media, you know, so you're going to adjust that to see what works well for you. So now let's talk about the electrical system on the RAPP70. This is our main electrical panel right here. And rather than sitting here trying to show you every single wire that's a hot and a ground and so forth, we're going to post a picture of all of this wiring as an additional photo to the REPP70 uh, product page. There's going to be a link down below in the description. And all of these components you can buy on our website from the little lighted switches uh, to the fuse holder over here, as well as the little electrical outlet right there that operates uh, the fan for the vacuum system. All of this stuff is available on our website, as well as uh, photos showing how it should all be wired. I'm going to go ahead and do a little demonstration for you here of the blower motor that operates the vacuum on this unit. Plugs right here into the side of the cabinet. You have a uh, switch right there for the dust collector. Turn it on and it operates the, uh, the blower. We've got these things on our website if you should need a replacement. Now let's talk about our two electromagnetic valves on the back side of the control board as well as how to tell if they're working properly. So here's what we've got. We've got our incoming power line right here. This is the big one and you get incoming power only when the foot pedal is depressed. So the way that we can tell if we've got power coming into our two electromagnetic valves, you'll notice that we kind of deconstructed this little fitting right here. It's easy to do with a Phillips head screwdriver and if I were to test the voltage across these two little uh, uh, Phillips head screws right here. We've got our meter set to voltage and you see we have zero volts. Now if I reach over and I push down the foot pedal, you'll see it jump to 120. So this lets us know that we're getting 120 volts that comes into this electromagnetic valve. The wires are both connected together. So if this one's getting 120, this one's getting 120. And the way that we can tell if those are operating correctly is when we press the foot pedal, if we're getting air out of this uh, orange line right here, and if we're getting air out of this orange line, that will tell us if those two valves are working properly. The lights on the REPP70 are three individual LED light tubes. The bottom light is daisy chained into the middle. On the other end, the middle light is daisy chained into the top one. They all connect and are fed into the power supply through the switch. And that has been the Redline REPP70 Deconstructed Blast Cabinet video. I'm going to put a link down below in the description where you can find all the replacement parts to that unit on our website, as well as a link to the actual blaster itself. If you got questions, by all means, please ask them below in the comments. We're happy to answer questions there. And as a favor to me, if you don't mind, uh, click the subscribe button, follow along with our YouTube channel. You guys be good. We appreciate you watching and take care.